anymore. So B1 has this structure where we have our diagonal entries. But then we have, I use a plus here to indicate an unwanted non zero entry um, on the sub diagonal that, that this given rotation is introduced. And the reason why is the given rotation affects these first two columns. By doing a rotation, it introduces this non zero entry there. Okay. Um, then what do we do? Well, we want to get rid of that unwanted non zero entry. So, so the idea is at this point, we've ruined by diagonal form, now we have to fix it. So now we apply a Gibbons row rotation, H1, to 0 to 2, 1 entry. And we're going to plot as a row rotation. So we're going to apply it on the left. So we have H1 transpose uh, B G1. That's abbreviation for Hattiesburg. Um, okay, now H1 is going to rotate the first two rows. So it's going to make that entry zero. There'll be something up here. But what is the bad thing that's going to come out of this? If we rotate the first two rows, what is the unwanted non-zero we're going to get? Where will it be? What? Um, yeah, right here. The row one, column three. So we're going to have this entry up here, and then everything else is going to be just fine the way it is. Okay. So we first had it here. Now it's bounced to here. Um, so then what we do is we use a Gibbons column rotation, which I'll call G2, in order to 0, 1, 3 entry. So we have H1 transpose, B, G1, G2. OK, so this is already made 0. So now. We're rotating columns again. We're going to rotate columns two and three. So this entry will now be made zero. But where is a non-zero going to pop up where we don't want it? Second row. Second column. Second third column, row. third row. All right, so that will go here. OK, so it was here, was here. Now it bounced to here. Um, so. So we just continue this process. So the idea is you're going to chase this unwanted non-zero entry out of B. So it's just going to keep bouncing around from here to here to here to here to here to here until you it falls off the edge. You're basically chasing it off its leg as it zigzags to try to get away from you. So, um, so, so that is a, it's the equivalent of a QR step. And uh, by the implicit Q theorem, it really is equivalent. Um, because all we're doing is, we're taking a first transformation that would be applied in a symmetric QR step that ruins by diagonal form. And then we do all this to fix by diagonal form. And it's because of the implicit Q theorem that we know that that's, that really is equivalent. Um, so the idea is we want to reduce B to a diagonal matrix. So how can we tell what's going to happen if we don't actually? Because really it's T we want to be diagonal. Um, so as far as handling decoupling, that's actually not hard to do because uh, each Subdiagonal entry of T that we're implicitly working with um, is equal to a product of entries of B. 
So what that means is if any entry in B becomes nearly zero, then we have decoupling. So we don't have to we don't have to compute any portion of T to monitor the subdiagonal and see whether it's going to zero or whether it's getting closer to diagonal form. We can just watch the entries of B and uh, detect the coupling that way to figure out which uh, block um, of B we need to work on to continue computing singular values. Um, so, um, so there you have it. And then all of the transformations that we're using to do this, you keep accumulating them in order to come up with matrices U and V from the uh, singular value decomposition. And uh, um, B, when it's reduced to bidiagonal form, it basically is sigma. The only difference is um, the singular values along the diagonal may not be in the right order, but that's okay. You can just do, use a permutation matrix to um, get the order correct according to the conventional definition of the uh, singular value decomposition. Okay. Um, and the SVD algorithm that's used uh, often for um, least squares problems. Um, I should mention, this is in the notes, um, I just want to um, take a new lecture on because of <coughs> taking homework questions, but uh, there's a whole class of methods called Jacobi methods for computing eigenvalues for a symmetric matrix and also the um, SVD, where what you do is you use Gibbons rotations to um, figure out like what is the largest entry off the diagonal, and you just zero that entry. And the nice thing is, since they're Gibbons rotations, they only affect a couple rows or columns. You can apply them in parallel. Um, so because the Jacobi method by itself, just a regular implementation, is not very efficient compared to the QR algorithm. But, if you can, but nothing about the QR algorithm really is parallelizable. So um, so it's just Jacobi methods um, offer an alternative where um, when parallelism is available. Um, funny thing is, Gibbons rotations were actually invented by Jacobi. So in that context, they're called Jacobi rotations. But um, I guess for QR or finding eigenvalues, they're named after Gibbons for what reason, I don't know. Um, so I guess you have to be careful. Can you work with um, yeah, uh, and then you never know why you might get named after you yeah. <laughs> for, for no legitimate reason. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I just have to be very careful what you work with. Um, so you said that was for a symmetric matrix? Um, yeah, because um, what you're trying to do is um, yeah, you use these Jacobi rotations to reduce uh, to diagonal form. So is it only better than um, the QR algorithm if you do it in parallel? Um, yeah, because um, otherwise it just takes too many transformations to go up down to diagonal form. Um, and so, it's, it's, you need whatever speed up that parallelism can give you. Um, but again, the parallelism is becoming much more common these days. So, um, yeah, th this happens a lot in direct linear algebra, especially that algorithms that, when they're first developed, may not be all that efficient compared to what's out there, but then computer architecture changes, and now. Um, it uh, becomes a viable option. So you, you, it's important to keep these things around. Um, okay, so, um, so this is I come to the uh, end of the material. Um, we have uh, about 15 minutes left. Yes. Um, does anyone have any more questions on any assignment that is still outstanding? Is anyone here going to do the programming option for homework four? Yeah, I kind of figured you would. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it looks easier, maybe. Okay. Yeah. What? I may do programming. Oh, yeah. Um, well, yeah, I kind of figured if anyone else would, you would. <laughs> um, and then, um, yeah, I guess the rest of the more theoretical problems, so. Um, no homework questions about any assignments? 
Will I be seeing homework free, more homework-free submissions soon? Of course. Okay. All right. Because uh, the semester's almost over. <laughs> well, by so. process of elimination of days, you should. <laughs> <laughs> I said, by process of elimination of days left, yeah. you should. Yeah, yeah that, that, that's, that's what I'm thinking. So. Okay, um, in that case, um, I will be on hand on Wednesday for anyone um, who still has questions about either assignment three or four. Um, and, uh, um, and that'll be it for tonight.